we've seen the dangers of the banks. Uh, we, we understand, most people watching this understand that the banks are in, in great danger, partly because they were buying government bonds that are uh, no longer holding their value. We saw banks collapsing. And Custodia Bank tried to do something different, which would be like a full reserve bank, so they wouldn't be subject to the ups and downs of the bond market like other banks are. Um, seems like a pretty good idea. Like, the bank actually holds my money, so I can yeah. get it when I want. But yet, the Fed didn't like that. The Fed has a, uh, they have a lot of arguments as to why they, they don't want to grant Custodia a master account. And of course, the, the master account is the uh, first building block to having a real bank. Now, you, you can have a bank with a, what's called a correspondent account, and you can function. It is a, it's significantly more expensive, I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm sure uh, Caitlin or other banker, bankers could get into precisely how much more expensive and why that is. But without a master account, you're not a first-class citizen of the banking system. Similarly, if you're not running a node, you're not a first-class citizen of the Bitcoin system. Uh, that is effectively your a master account. Means you have your own account with the Fed. Exactly. So that you, 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 if your bank effectively can clear directly with the Fed. Right. Um, the the Fed doesn't want to grant Custodia a master account for a couple of different reasons. Their stated reason. I think one of the more uh, later stated reasons was Custodia doesn't have FDIC insurance. Well, we know that's uh, not really, uh, that, that's a red herring because there's several hundred banks that have master accounts that don't have FDIC insurance mm, really? that are not fully reserved. Okay. So they're running bare. Um, there are uh, other reasons why they've said this, but fundamentally they don't want to give Custodia a master account because Custodia is potentially a risk to them. If you have a fully reserved bank, you can't have a run on your bank because if you if you put a thousand dollars in the bank, the bank has a thousand dollars. They haven't lent it out. Under in Custodia's case, it's a violation of state law for them to lend out that money. So they have it on their balance sheet and can immediately return it to you. Um, the problem is, like, look at Silicon Valley Bank. A whole bunch of businesses that never had a relationship with Silicon Valley Bank got into uh, financial trouble when Silicon Valley Bank went down because a lot of the fintechs were routing their payrolls through Silicon Valley Bank. And mm -hmm. so the moment they went down, some of these payrolls were in flight. Well, you know, little, li uh, little mom and pop that's running their payroll with, with a uh, uh, fintech company that happens to have their payroll in flight when the bank goes under and the payroll doesn't get to their employees. Well, they didn't have a relationship with, uh, uh, with SVB, so uh, they suddenly got impacted. Well, if, right. they're, if that mezzanine bank that was handling these payrolls was Custodia, and Custodia had a problem, all that money is still there. So yeah. it, wouldn't have a, it couldn't have a run on the bank. Right. So at that point, as a small business owner, what do you think? Do you think you want to have your uh, payroll be, being run through a bank that could fail or a bank that can't fail? I would like the can't fail. Exactly. Yeah. So fundamentally, the risk that they're not going to say out loud, but the, the risk to the system is that Custodia is too safe and it, uh, it puts stress on the rest of the system, which of course, um, it, it, it's, it remains to be seen it's a, it's a, if, if that will actually happen um, because Custodia, as a, the way they have to make money is they have to charge fees. So their fees are going to be um, you know, significantly higher than someone who can basically give you a free checking account uh, because they're making all their scratch on uh, lending out the money. Of course, J.P. Morgan just said that they're getting rid of free checking. So, even so, so you're saying the Fed um, declined Custodia's bank, a full reserve bank that should be a lot less risky, they declined it because it is less risky. I think that's. I think that played a role. I'm not sure if that's the entire and, reason. Uh, obviously, to the listener, they're scratching their heads. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, "Well, why would they decline it because it's less risky?" Because it because it damages the Fed's uh, fractional reserve system. So what you're saying is, it makes every all the other banks look so bad. Yeah. that everybody might want to come to Custodia, which would then cause a massive run on all the other banks. Exactly. Uh, potentially. Uh, potentially. The potentially. flip side is, is that the question is, we don't know, will people accept less risk and pay higher for it monthly? Yep. We don't know that. We don't know we that. We can't know that. That's what and the free market would figure out. Exactly. And another reason I think that the Fed is uh, going after or preventing Custodia from getting a master account is, uh, and this is the argument that... Uh, a couple of individuals have made in the Custodia case, uh, including the Wyoming Secretary of State, which is the Federal Reserve wants to pull back on the dual banking system. Uh, 
which is right now the U.S. has a dual banking system where there are federally chartered banks and state chartered banks. And these banks are supposed to be on a completely level playing field with respect to access to the Fed. I think they don't like this. I think they want to effectively remove this system from existence. And they want everything to become a federally chartered bank. Because they, the, uh, the, the, they don't have full visibility. They don't have full regulatory control over what some of the state banks can do. The state... Uh, of Wyoming, the state of Virginia, the state of New York, does have full regulatory control over the state chartered banks, but their bank regulators can't touch the federally chartered banks. So uh, you basically are effectively having a battle of two regulatory visions, or, no different or, or uh, 51 regulatory visions. Yeah, yeah.